Hey, John Brown here, Next Gen Pastor at Journey Church in Kenosha, Wisconsin. We're actually a multi-site church in the Chicagoland area, have campuses in both Wisconsin and Illinois, and also one in Vilnius, Lithuania. And uh, my job as the Next Gen Pastor is to help align all of the ages zero to 30. So those who are responsible for those ages working together to create alignment. And that's my assignment here today to help you to begin to start thinking about how you can create alignment and a next gen strategy. And whether you have a large church with lots of resources and lots of people, or you have a smaller church with maybe less resources and less people, we believe it's important for you to begin to think about how you can create alignment and a strategy to reach the next generation. Because uh, our mission as a church is, is really hinges on this is that we would help the next generation to fall in love with Jesus and to be fully devoted followers of Him. And so I really believe that this starts with, the, the road is paved with, to creating a next gen strategy and alignment, is paved with relationship. So maybe in your context, it's you have a kids pastor and a youth pastor. Then let's start there. That's actually how it started for me almost 20 years ago. This fall will be 20 years that we came to Journey Church. And it started with me. I actually started as an assistant youth pastor and, uh, and then launched a middle school ministry. I was sitting at a workshop, very similar to this one, and uh, the speaker said to the room, that you need to become close friends with your kid's pastor. He was speaking to a room of youth pastors. And I took those words and I began to, to actually implement those things. Great concept, right? That you would sit in a conference like this and you begin to apply the principles that you're learning. I went home immediately and I began to, to develop a relationship with our kid's pastor. I would take him out to coffee. Didn't even like coffee at the time. I'd take him out to lunch. And I just began to pick his brain. Tell me some of your dreams, some of your vision for the kids ministry. What is it that you dream of with these students that God's entrusted you with? What are some of the things that are on your heart that you haven't been able to do that maybe if I came alongside of you and served you that I could help you to accomplish? And it was one of those such conversations that he began to dream about a student leadership team for third, fourth, and fifth graders. He called it PIT Crew, Pastors in Training. That was the, the acronym that he used at the time. There was a, a, a NASCAR type theme to the kids ministry. And he said, I would love it if your middle schoolers would come and begin to do some of the trainings, uh, some of the leadership development, if you would come and teach on the team. And I began to invite him to do the same with our middle schoolers. And as we dreamed together, as we shared vision together, it was, it was just natural that that vision be began to become intertwined. And we began to work together all the time, pouring into and serving each other's ministries. Now, I'm not by any means suggesting that you should become best friends with the, the youth pastor if you're a kid's pastor or vice versa. Uh, but that was how it worked for us. And it was born out of relationship. If you would like to pave the way and have, have a road that is worth traveling on when it comes to creating a next-gen strategy and creating alignment, it really comes, really starts with relationship and serving each other and come alongside of each other and listening to each other's dreams. Sometimes I think the relationships between kids pastors and youth pastors can be strained because we are in our own little silos. We have different visions and the kids pastor dreams of this and the youth pastor is kind of off here running his own thing. And, and, and you know what, really, both are responsible. We have to work together. So you may have multiple people on your team, then, then pulling all of them together, but it really starts with the, the relationship between the kids and the youth pastor. And if you, you are privileged enough to have a young adults pastor, it starts there fostering and developing those relationships. And then out of that, I want to just dive into some very specific conversations that I believe that you should have. We only have a short time together, so I'm not going to have a lot of time to break these down, but I want to make myself and our team available to you if you'd like to continue this conversation. The first conversation that we believe that you need to have is a conversation about scope and sequence. Scope and sequence is really your discipleship strategy, what you're teaching from early childhood, maybe for all the way starting back to the nursery, some of the things you begin to teach kids at very young ages into early childhood, really looking at maybe um, your threes and four year olds, and then elementary, and you have early elementary and later elementary, and then you have your middle school, your high school, and even into college. 
And if you could have conversations with those that are involved in those areas of ministry about what would it look like to begin to teach some of these concepts over here, to disciple uh, young, young children, to love the Word of God, and then uh, making sure you're hitting certain themes as they're going along in different ages so that you're not maybe reteaching the same things, but you have a long game mentality. I think that's key for us as churches is we need to play the long game. One of the reasons why we have parked ourselves here for 20 years is because we're playing the long game. We know that discipleship really is about just setting your roots down and making sure that you're somewhere for the long haul so that you can implement strategies like this. But scope and sequence is a very important conversation. Um, Justaphase.com is a great place to start with this. Reggie Joyner and Kristen Ivey have put some great resources together in their book called It's Just a Phase. And it talks about the different age groups and at what points you begin to um, shift your focus as the needs begin to change and making sure that you have really a full scope and sequence from zero to 30 um, so that you're helping them develop at the, the level that they are already developing um, and making sure that you're really thinking strategically about that full, uh, that full gamut of sequence for those age groups. Second one that I want to hit that I believe that you need to have conversations around. And, and this is just to start the conversation. The baby step for you, if you haven't had these conversations, is just to begin to think about it and dream about it and look to people who have had maybe a little bit more uh, conversation than you have. They're a little bit further down the road than you are. Um, and that's the conversation of milestones. So number one is scope and sequence. Number two is very similarly related. It's milestones. We have identified seven milestones here at Journey Church. These are spiritual high points. There's a lot of things that we celebrate within the church. Um, and one of those being baptism and maybe baptism in the Holy Spirit. There's a lot of things that we celebrate in the world, right? Uh, awards maybe for a baseball championship that's won or straight A's on a report card. But I believe that as parents, one of the most important things that we can celebrate is our child's spiritual development. And so we've identified seven different checkpoints or milestones, so to speak, uh, that we want to help parents celebrate. We want to help parents be the hero in their home and help them capitalize on these moments so that they can celebrate the things that matter, the spiritual things in a, in a young person's life because what we celebrate gets repeated, right? So you can head on over to jrnyparent.com, Journey Parent, or jrnyparent.com, and you can see our milestones laid out. This is not a concept that is exclusive to us. Many churches have done this and we've learned from them, just like I'm encouraging you to do. But those milestones for us are child dedication, a child's first Bible, and usually, you know, that would be given around ages four to five. Uh, salvation, helping a child to receive Christ into their life and really helping parents celebrate that well. A rite of passage, which is the passage from fifth grade into sixth grade. And, uh, and then water baptism, purity commitment, and then the launch, we call it the launch, but it's really graduation. And so these milestones, we're, we're wanting to celebrate them as the, as the church, but what we're really wanting to do is put the tools in the hands of the parents to celebrate those moments and working with mom and dad to help them to be the spiritual hero and helping set them up for the win and stepping back and removing ourselves so that they win well and so putting tools in their hands so that they can celebrate these milestone moments well. Number three, a conversation that we encourage you to have within your next gen department and those that work with both kids, youth and young adults is your handoffs. Because we can run the race well, maybe within youth ministry, but if we're not handing them off well to uh, into this, the phases of college and career and young families, then we've missed it. We can, we can run with them well in kids ministry, but if we don't hand them off well to the youth ministry, then did we really gain anything? So that's why it's so important that we work together. So I wanna encourage you to have conversations around handoffs. For us, uh, some of those places that we start to see kids transition, right? From middle school into high school, that handoff oftentimes within churches is fumbled. We don't do well with that. And so we really take a period of several months where we begin in fifth grade, towards the tail end of their fifth grade, to begin handing them off. And we end, that all culminates to a moment that we call the rite of passage moment. Uh, we call it the bridge. 
and the bridge is is uh, an event that we do out a, at a high ropes course with mom and dad again as the hero um, being a part of that and we're helping hand them off from one small group leader in elementary school to their new small group leaders in middle school and also working with mom and dad to create a very special letter where they affirm and call out the gold in their child and helping mom and dad to continue to speak into their child's development, let them know what they see and where they see them going. And so that rite of passage handoff moment is so powerful. And again, we don't have time to break it all down, but going into college from high school when they graduate, making sure that that handoff uh, is, is a good one a solid one into young adult ministry, whether that be off to the college that they go if they're leaving or into our young adult ministry and small groups. The number four conversation that you need to have is parent strategy. All of this fails without our parents involved. We can be the heroes and so many churches try and put on the hero cape and become the heroes when it comes to discipling children and youth and young adults, but we're not the heroes. We know that we only have kids for a certain amount of time in any given week. And uh, Reggie Joyner explains that so well. We only have about 40 to 50 hours um, in the average student's life. But a parent has so many more hours. And so investing into a parent strategy is huge. And having a conversation around what is our strategy to minister to parents. If they are the primary discipler and God has placed that mantle upon their shoulders, not on ours, then how can we better partner with parents to help them disciple their child? And so next-gen ministry and create an alignment an important conversation to have would be around parent strategy. Some of the ways that we do this is we have a parent Facebook community across each of our age groups where we are continuing to communicate um, as best as we can through um, posts and videos and conversations, parent Zooms, especially in this season, uh, to help resource them well, to help them really truly be the hero of their home. And if we would have conversations of how we partner with parents at an early age and then into elementary and then into middle school and then into high school and then into college obviously that's less and less as they get older but if we would work together on a parent strategy how much more effective would we be so I want to encourage you to have conversations around a parent strategy another thing that we do is we do parent nights we do parent connect events uh, we, which is really a resourcing date night for them to uh, get away together and be poured into on maybe Something such as uh, online safety and apps and social media and how can you protect your child. And so working and partnering with parents to help them in these ways, um, helping them to be better at what they do and feel more confident in what God's called them to do is, is a powerful thing. And it's re even more powerful when you can work together across all departments in NextGen to do this. And then the last conversation, I alluded to it in my story earlier with my one of my best friends, our kids pastor, Chris. Um, is a student leadership pipeline. Imagine having student leadership at elementary ages and you begin to develop them intentionally and purposefully in the area of student leadership, developing them in their skills, um, equipping them to, be, to do the work of the ministry and beginning to develop them at young ages, uh, not only identifying the leadership gifts in them, but developing them. And then think about if you did this in middle school, a lot of churches wait until high school if they even have a student leadership program. And, and, but if you did that in elementary and you did that in middle school and you did that in high school and then you did that even into the young adult ministry, imagine how different of leaders you would be producing if you played the long game. If you begin to develop, recognize talent and develop it early. And we did this, uh, Chris and I, all those years ago, not really fully knowing what we were doing. It just came out of our dream sessions. And those leaders are some of the greatest leaders that I've seen come through our ministry because we started developing them early. And the kind of leaders that they were, uh, you can imagine missionaries and youth pastors and worship pastors and so many that are in the marketplace making a difference because we recognized talent early and we developed it early and we had a strategy working together to develop. So we weren't just starting over in middle school, we were working together to make sure, and we had middle schoolers pouring into the elementary students, we had high school students pouring into the middle school student leaders, and we had college age students pouring into the high school student leaders. Incredible strategy. If you have any questions about this, and you wanna work at creating more alignment within your church, I wanna encourage you to reach out 
um, to myself and our team. We would love to have this conversation and help you in the process of having these conversations at your church in the next gen strategy. My email will be uh, down below, jbrown at ourjourneychurch.com and we'd love to have that conversation and help you further this.